Okay, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a simple start screen. This process is reasonably well documented elsewhere, but it will provide a good point to start doing some more in-depth and interesting things in the next few videos, like creating your own custom controls and how to work with the different list views. So, let's get started. The first thing that we're going to need is a game object within our scene that will hold the UI document script and the presenter C-sharp script we'll need for this menu. So if we right click in the hierarchy, go down to UI toolkit and select UI document, you can see we've created a game object here and it's already added our UI document component ready for us. For now, I'm going to leave the name as it is, as I find that it is quite descriptive and you're only really going to have one of these in your scene as all of the UI should be then handled within the um, documents, the UXML documents themselves. The only exception to that would be if you want some um, in-world UI which isn't currently handled by the system and you'd still be using the old UI system that Unity provides alongside it. So now if we select our UI document, we can see in the inspector we've got our panel settings which has already been created for us. And this visual tree asset, this is going to be the description, the UXML document that will be the description of what your UI is going to look like. So the first thing we need to do is set up all of the different um, elements that we're going to need. So that's going to be a UXML document and a C Sharp script, at least for now to get started. So I'm already in a UI toolkit folder, which is just in the root of my assets. I have already populated this with a few things, so a couple of fonts, some icons uh, and a background that we're going to use for this. Yours won't necessarily be fully populated, but you should have a Unity Themes folder and a Panel Settings object. We'll be using these later. So I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to call this Panels. And inside that, oh, that's still not been named correctly. So panels. And if we go inside there, in here, we're going to create, we're going to go to right click, go to create, uh, go down to UI toolkit, and then select UI document. Give that a few seconds. And then we're going to name this main menu. No, I'm going to name this tutorial main menu. And then next next door to this, I'm going to create a C sharp script, which I'm going to call tutorial main menu presenter. Okay. <clears throat> so just before I attach these to the document, I'm just going to go back to the UI toolkit and go to panel settings. Now I've already set this up uh, before I started the video but you will by default have this on constant pixel size. So what you want to do is then go to scale with screen size and set your resolution to 1920 by 1080 or whichever screen size you prefer to match um, everything to. This is just gonna mean that if your game is played on uh, different sizes and different resolutions of screen, the UI should scale accordingly. Okay. And then the last thing that we need to do is go to the UI document and in our panels, UI document again, drag the UXML um, file that we created into the visual tree asset. And then we're going to just take that C sharp script and drop it next door. And we'll leave it there for now. Uh, we'll come back later to be able to actually add some functionality here. Okay, so our scene is now set up and ready. We can now move on to building out our menu. We double click on the UXML document, it's going to open up this UI builder view. Now you can just leave this um, like this, however, I prefer to have this docked inside the Unity editor somehow. I'm not a big fan of this setup, so I'm just going to close this tab, change my layout to UI builder, and this is one I've created earlier, and this is still almost entirely the UI builder but it has the project and console down below. Console will often pop up with little errors if you make mistakes and it's good to be able to catch them by seeing it with the rest of the screen and you've got your project view to be able to drag different assets 
into your UI builder. Now, just a bit of setup. If we select the UXML document here, again, this is some stuff I've set up earlier, but it's already set the canvas width to 1920 by 1080. But just to be sure, I'm going to do match game view and this will just keep the resolution at whatever I've set the game view resolution to be. So if I change it to 4K, it'll change to 4K or free aspect, it will be that. If you've already, if you're doing this a bit later on and you've already started developing your game, what you can do is go down and turn on the canvas background and you could actually attach a camera here and the background will display the game view from that camera. So if you're trying to create a bit of UI but also see how that's going to interact with the game that you've already built, this is a good way to handle that. But for now, I'm just going to turn that off and have the blank canvas behind. Now we start building out UI elements. So I'm going to add a top level visual element to my hierarchy. For that, go down to the library and select visual element, drag it into your hierarchy like this. It is important to remember that everything in these controls, everything that's on your document is a visual element and everything else, buttons, labels, toggles, all inherit from visual element. This will be important later on. As far as the basic visual element, like the one I've added is concerned, there's two main uses. First is for grouping elements. This is part of what this uh, visual element that I've added is going to do. And the other is to display images, which this visual element is also going to do. So first thing I want is to make this full screen. As you can see, it's only taking up this top portion first. So I'm going to go over to the right hand side inspector. In the flex options, I've got grow. I'm going to set that to one. You can see that's now going to fill the entire screen. So then can scroll down to the background section in the inspector and I want to add an image that I've prepared earlier. So I'm going to go down to my project view down here into UI toolkit backgrounds. And I can just drag this into that texture. And you can see it's added that texture quite nicely onto my background. The two more things I'm going to do to this visual element. The first one is this setting up here is flex direction. I'm going to change it so that it's going from left to right. I will point out I will be using different layout options throughout this video and we'll try and explain them as I go. However, if you'd like a dedicated tutorial on all the different flex directions and justifications and other options for laying out your UIs, please leave a comment down below. And then the last thing I'm going to do is give this visual element a name. While for this element it's probably not strictly necessary, it's good practice to make sure that every single one of your elements is named. So this one is just going to be called background. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add another visual element to the background. Okay, And this one is going to be our sidebar. And as you can see it's already on the left hand side. This was the result of me changing this flex direction. Otherwise, if it was down the top, then you can see that this visual element is coming from the top. So inside this one, I'm going to name it sidebar. And then down in size, I'm going to set the width. I'm going to set it, set it as 30%. And then the last thing for the sidebar is I'm going to scroll down and set the background color I'm going to set this to uh, a purpley color, darkish purple, something like that. And then it's going to be fairly black, but just with the slightest hint, something like that for now. So next, I want to add the four components that this sidebar is going to have. And we'll add that from the controls library down here. This has your basic set of controls, label button, toggle, scroller, etc. I do believe in Unity 2022 this is expanded out to provide other um, controls as well, but this is all I've got for now in, in 2021. So I'm going to add a label, which I'm just going to drag and drop, and you can see it's, it is there, it's just got a black text which is hard to see on the dark background, but we'll change that in a moment. 
and the n three buttons one two three these are going to be our start settings and quit something to be aware of if you're following along this might not be quite what your ui looks like and that's because i've changed what theme i'm using and chances are it looks something a little bit more like this or this depending on which editor theme you're currently using so the this is the default editor theme but this is not what we're going to be using our game view if i just swap over to the game view here you can see it looks like it did before so if you're confused on why there's a difference between your game view and this view this should explain why so back to the ui builder i'll just set this back to the unity default runtime theme we're going to look at how to edit this and make this more useful shortly Okay, so this doesn't look very pretty at this point, so let's start trying to style it out and make it look a bit better. First thing I'm going to do, if I select the sidebar, just want to justify all of these icons, which I think is this button, yep, there we go, and just have them all sort of centered uh, around that point. So that looks a bit better. Okay. Now, while I could select each of these elements and start styling them, that's probably going to cause uh, more problems than it's worth and it also means I'm copying across um, the styles so for the three buttons I'm going to want them to look the same I have to copy all those styles it's a much easier way in the top left of the builder up here we've got the style sheets menu so what we're going to do from here click the little plus plus click the little plus and select create new USS we're going to go into UI toolkits, create a new folder, which we'll call styles. I want to create two USS files. The first one being tutorial underscore labels. And another one, again, UI toolkits, styles, and this one, tutorial underscore buttons then I can select either either of these but to start with I'm going to add a new selector the selector we're going to place onto our elements and once those elements have those selectors or classes then they will follow the styling rules that we've set out in the style sheet so the first what I'm going to make is label dash main dash title hit enter you can see that's been added to the tutorial labels USS and select the tutorial buttons and I'm hoping that we can then add a new selector to that which will be button main main title as you can see that's gone into tutorial labels as well but we'll just swap that over into tutorial buttons now all we need to do is drag these selectors onto the elements that they're going to be uh, that we want them to control so the title can go on to label and we can take button and we can drag those straight onto the buttons and now if we hover over these selectors we can see what it is that they're affecting similar with that one and also if we select for example the label we can see in the inspector on the right hand side we've got label main title now we can select these on the um, in the selector we can now see the inspector for that style first thing I'm going to do is change the color so that I can actually see what I'm working with and we can go down to text and color and again I'm going to go around to that sort of purpley theme color something like that but I am going to just then move this up into the white but just have a little hint that something like that and we can see now our label is visible it's a very small so I'm going to set the style to bold and then I'm going to set the size up to something around, I think, 48. That was probably a bit big. Yeah, 48. That's, that's going to look good. And the next thing I'm going to do is actually go back to the label, give it a, the actual text that it's going to have, which in this case is going to be UI Toolkit 
tutorial. There we go. Now back to the selector. What else do I want to do? Next thing is probably set up some margins and padding. So for this, I'm going to start at the top level um, and get it somewhere around what I want. But if I then want to add a bit more to the left or the right or the bottom, then I can do that. So we'll start with everything and we'll give it ooh, 14, maybe a bit more, maybe 28. I think that looks good for now. You can always come back and edit this later. Okay, so for now, that's our um, heading, which I quite like. Next, I want to change the buttons. Now, if I go to the buttons uh, main title style, I can now start changing those. Okay, so going and selecting the button selector. So first things first, down to the text, set that to bold change the size I think I'm gonna make this 30, about 32 yeah that seems seems like that's gonna be good okay and now I want to change the color of these so I'm gonna go down to the background and again I'm gonna go with that I'm trying to theme this to a um, certain color palette it's still gonna be dark but I am gonna actually have a bit more purple in this time rather than being all the way over here uh, maybe something something like that that will do I'm going to change the color of the text as I can't see it anymore I'm going to try and sort of match the white as best I can in fact I'm going to go back to the um, label here because I want the color here to match and for now I'm just going to copy it from here go back to the button change the color here and I'm going to give it the same white color here we go <clears throat> that's the background done next I'm going to add uh, a bit of border and this I'm going to bring to the color again going to be that purple but I'm going to make it kind of quite bright to highlights you can see it a little bit there but I'm going to change the width I'm going to make that a width of four and I'm just going to give the uh, corners of the button a bit of radius. 14 seems good. I'm liking the look of those buttons. Starting to get about what I want. I think the last thing I want to do is I don't want them going all the way over to the edge like this. So um, there's a couple of options I've got here. I think I'm going to, I need to adjust the margins and padding. So possibly I will deal with it there. So first things first is let's adjust the margin. So I do want to put a bit of space between each of the buttons. I think about 12. That's probably a good spacing for now. But then for the right hand side, I'm just going to increase that a bit and bring those in. Maybe make that about 180. And that just brings them in a little bit from there. And actually the left as well. I'm just going to give them a bit more padding there so they line up with the title a little bit. A little, give them a little bit more padding on the left so they line up with the title a bit better. And I think about 30 will do there. I'll bring the right down again, maybe to 160. There we go, that looks good. Now I want my buttons to react when the mouse is interacting with them. We can see what this is gonna look like in the UI builder by going up to the top right of the viewport and selecting preview. From here, can start moving my mouse around and at the moment not a lot is actually happening and you might be you might suspect that nothing has really changed so what we want to do to actually start seeing some changes is we're going to create a couple more uh, selectors for our buttons these ones we're not going to have to drag and drop over so what we want to do is go back to the selector at the top and we're going to give this selector the same name as our buttons that we did before. So it will be button dash main dash title. And then what we want to add is a colon onto the end. By adding the colon, we're able to enable pseudo classes. Now I will include a link uh, in the description of the video to the Unity website um, 
that will tell you all of the pseudo classes that you have available but these are classes that get enabled when certain actions happen within your UI so the first one we're going to create is hover if we hit enter that's going to be added to our tutorial labels again we'll just drag that into our buttons class excellent sorry into our button style and then we're going to add one more which will be button dash main dash uh, title colon active <clears throat> and again drag that into our, our button style it is important that you try and break up your styles as much as possible uh, into different classes it is possible that you might even have multiple button styles within your program depending on how much uh, styling you, you need and how big your project is but you're always going to need a lot of styles and these style classes can get very cluttered very quickly if you try and just keep all the styles together okay so I've now added these but still nothing is really happening we're gonna select our hover selector the hover is gonna handle whenever the mouse is hovering over the UI element that this class is attached to if we go over to the inspector we can now go down to background and if I change that for a second just to say red and we now hover over you can see the background changes now that's not actually what the color I want it to go to the color I want it to go to if I go to my main title is the main border color that I'm using so go to that for now I'm just going to copy that over here set that as the background and now if I hover over the button has this nice little hover effect okay excellent now active is the pseudo class for when the button will uh, when you click on the button when you do a left mouse click so to set that up again same thing you select your selector and then you make the changes to the style that you want to happen in my case I want to just change the background back to being def the def what it looks like by default so I'll go to my main style again select the background copy that go back to the uh, active selector change the background and set it to the same color so you can see if I click, hover over left mouse click it'll go back to normal one more change just so that there's a, a little bit of a distinction when I hover over I'm going to change the text to black and then when I click I'm going to leave it as black so if I go back to my hover state I'm going to change my text color to be a nice dark color in fact I'm going to copy that from my sidebar background uh, there we go copy that go back to my hover state change the text color paste it in here if you'd like to see um, how to set up variables with your styles so that you reduce this copy time I'll be covering that in my next video so now if I hover over you can see the button turns to a darker black color and if I click down you'll see it will just stay at that color and then let go move away and it's back to white so now I've got a button that is reacting to what I'm telling it to do the last thing I want to do in this video is connect the UI to some code so the UI will actually do something. For now that will only be some debug logs when you click the buttons but it's a start. Before we move over to the code I just need to go and do a little bit more tidy up so I need to go through each of my um, elements that I've already created make sure they've got a name so in this case I'm going to just call this title and each of the buttons I'm going to have a start I'm going to set the text as well settings settings quit and quit and save one last thing you're going to want to remember the names that you set for these buttons 
If you've got a second screen that you can put the UI builder on, excellent. If you don't, note them down because they're going to be useful later. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to the my main Unity screen. So for that, I'm just going to go to my layout. I'm going to select the default layout. And if I go to my game view, should see, though the camera isn't rendering, uh, we can turn that off. Uh, we can see our UI, which I'm going to set to 1920 by 1080. And this is the UI that we set up. Now, if we hit the play button, you can also see all of our pseudo classes are still working and set up. But at the moment, nothing's happening. So, in the hierarchy, we're going to go down and select our UI document, and we're going to open up this presenter script that we made earlier. The first thing I'm going to do is remove all of this boilerplate code, and instead I'm going to create a private void awake to access Unity's awake callback. Now, in here, I'm going to create a new visual element as I mentioned earlier, everything is a visual element when working in this UI. And using Telesense, make sure you're adding the using Unity Engine.UI elements. And now that should remove those errors. And we're just going to call this root. And we're going to set that equal to get component UI document dot root visual element. This will give you access to the parent visual element of the UXML document. So now we want to access the buttons. Create a new line, call the root, and you've got this function Q. I'm guessing it stands for query. You've got three things you can do with this. The first one is you can use normal brackets, and you can put in the name of the element that you want to look for. This will just return you a visual element of that name and it will be the first one that you come across. The next thing you can do is use the less than and greater than signs and give a type. This will give you the first visual element of that type. The last thing you can do is actually combine the two. So, which is what we're going to do in this case, is we're going to have button and we're going to look for start. That's the name that we gave to the first button in the UXML document. So this is going to return me a visual element of type button that I can now manipulate. So from here, I'm going to do dot clicked. This is the callback whenever I click on that button. And I can just do a plus equals really simple add my lambda expression and use a debug dot log and pass start button clicked it's as simple as that and now all we need to do is duplicate this three times for settings and quit change the text to settings button clicked and oh, and quit button clicked. Now that we've done that we go back to Unity, hit play and then if we click on our buttons start button clicked, settings button clicked, quit button clicked over again. And that's the end of the video. I hope you've managed to learn something and started to get a grasp on using the UI toolkit. In the next video, I'll be adding variables to my styles to keep consistency across larger projects, starting on the settings menu and creating a custom control. If you enjoyed the video and are looking forward to the next one, please like and subscribe. See you next time.